Hey everyone, it's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 86 of the Love and Stitches. What? Love and Stitches <laughs> podcast. I should just start out by saying I only had like four, four and a half hours of sleep last night, so who even knows where this is gonna go? Hello, I'm so excited that you're here today for a regular podcast, thank goodness. Um, did I say it was Tuesday? Did I say what day it was at all? I don't even know what's happening. It's actually Wednesday and it's November 4th. Did I say that? <laughs> We're off to a great start. More to come on this. Um, anyway, yes, I did not get a ton of sleep last night because last night was election night and we were watching the election with some friends um, in Dallas and we don't, we live outside of Dallas. And so after we drove home and you know, I took a shower and went to bed and then I wake up really early. Yeah, so I'm going to bed early tonight, but definitely getting this podcast out to you guys on Thursday because last week I did not have time. I, I was out like Tuesday and Wednesday night last week. And so I was not able to get a podcast to you on time. We had a live podcast on Saturday, which was really, really fun. Thank you guys for coming. If you were able to make it live and for watching later, if you were able to watch it later. Um, but it was fun to do a live podcast, but I still just like the traditional podcast as well. So that's what we're doing here today. Even though it's not Tuesday, nothing is regular about it. But next week, We'll be back to normal for a little while and then you know we have the holidays coming up and everything's going to be a mess again anyway it is uh back to warm weather here in dallas it was 70 today yesterday it was 80 but in the morning it's really chilly so i am wearing my knitting in the morning most of the time today i wore my like a cloud cardigan i'm not wearing it any longer since it got so hot um, but that's my uh, mo gray mohair with lace cardigan from Hohi Locatelli. It's my absolute favorite and all of my other sweaters and cardigans are getting completely ignored because I just love that one so much. I finished it last year and I wore it and then I've worn it just as much this year already. It's amazing. Uh, what else? I have a new microphone, so hopefully it's it's working well. I used it for the live on Saturday and I've used it for other few other things um, and I think it's doing a good job. I got a longer one because last week I had, no, last podcast, that I sat down to do. I had a really short one and you couldn't see it, but it was actually like extending across, whereas this one has plenty. I don't know if I can show, yeah. Ooh, almost, I can almost show it to you. This one has like plenty of cord uh, should I need to be further away from the camera. So there we go. New microphone, it's Wednesday, wore some knitting today. What else do I have to tell you? Oh, um, so I wanted to say thank you so much because I have hit a milestone, a subscriber milestone here on YouTube. I think sometime last week I hit 6,000 subscribers, which is just amazing. Um, I Maybe I'll link this for you, but I have a video called Free Ways to Support Your Faves. And so it's like free ways you can help support your favorite podcasters, designers, um, uh, yarn dyers. And one of the ways that you can help support is if you're watching somebody on YouTube, you can subscribe to them. So you do have to be, I think you have to have an account in order to subscribe, um, but that really does help. Like it tells YouTube like, hey, this person is like worth watching because people who did watch it then subscribe so that they could come back to the channel. It's just one of those things like on Instagram, you know, following somebody and liking their posts and commenting, just general engagement. Um, but I'll link that video because it has lots of good ideas for YouTube and Instagram and Ravelry and you know everything for knitters and crocheters. But yeah, that's huge. 6,000 was my end of year goal. So in November, you guys have helped me reach my end of December goal. And so I'm super, super excited. I don't know if I will make a new goal for the end of this year because things have kind of been like, you know, different, hard to predict, but I will definitely make some goals in 2021. So uh, stay tuned for that. I think it's really important if you, I don't know, for everybody to like track your progress towards something, whether it's exercise or knitting or whatever you're doing. Um, it's just really encouraging to look back and see where you have come from. So anyway, thank you guys so much. It's overwhelming. It's a really, really 
it's really amazing. Um, and then one more thing. Oh yes. So today I, um, you're probably not surprised, but I have a few projects to show you, but not a ton because I did podcast on Saturday and now it's only Wednesday. And so I haven't had a ton of knitting time in between then, but I do have some projects to show you, but I do have lots of really good questions today from the Ravelry group. So I'm going to be answering those after I do my whips, but why don't we dive right into whips? Let's see. What do we want to talk about? first mm, let's talk about my halloween socks real quick because they haven't had much love so i am still working on my october halloween socks they're still in a halloween bag i think i might switch the bags and the progress keepers to not be halloween anymore sometimes when i'm like you know a project has extended its life past its time <laughs> if it's like seasonal i kind of you know change it up and it makes it feel like fun and new and everything um but this is totally not the right i didn't move my progress keeper since saturday but i think i've done like maybe 15 rounds or something now i'm really really close to getting to split so this is um uh oops i haven't done all this Let's see what am i doing today there we go mm -mm -mm. Okay. Um, oh, I just, <laughs> that just made me think of something. So when I got home just a little while ago, my husband and I were both driving home in separate cars because I needed to get something done to my car. And so he had to make a stop. He had to run an errand. And so I knew he was going to be in a little later than me. So, you know, I've closed the garage and everything. And I'm sitting down here making my podcast notes and I hear something fall in the garage. And I don't know about you, but I can really work myself up to get real, real scared. And so I, pull up my phone, I literally type in like 911, so I'm ready to dial if there's somebody in my garage, turn on the light, I open the door, nothing. But did I walk into the garage to see what fell? Absolutely not. I close the door, I turn off the lights, and I locked the door. So <laughs> when my husband gets home in just a little bit, I'm gonna have to go let him in because I have quite literally locked him out. Anyway, we're gonna do tangents today because that's just the mood that I'm in. Okay, sock yarn is Brazen Stitchery in the colorway in Skein in the Membrane, which is a yarn store here in Texas. Not, not close to me, but I did go to it on a yarn crawl. And so I am using um, a technique that I've never done before. Uh, basically, I guess you can call it afterthought everything. I'm knitting a tube. You can see it's just like rolled stockinette. I could have done ribbing, but I didn't because um, I didn't know what was gonna happen with the stripes. And luckily I found somewhat of a repeat in the stripes enough that I feel confident in making two matching socks and I'm so excited. And that does mean though that I'm gonna be cutting off the first three stripes here and not using them at all. And then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna add um, toes and cuffs and heels. I'm probably gonna do toes and cuffs in the solid and do heels in the striping because I do have like plenty of striping yarn left and yeah that's kind of my plan so i i might work on this over the weekend just trying to get it get it finished up but i'm not planning on casting on another pair of socks for november because i've already got like other projects to work on um, and i would rather wait till the end of november and continue with my sock miss socks because sock miss is going to be starting at the end of november and just you know get a fresh start so instead of coming into the month behind and then starting late and then trying to catch up with like the one pair of socks a month thing i'm just gonna finish these take my time and start new socks for basically december so that's my plan right now okay so hopefully you'll see some actual uh, shapes on that next week and it won't just be a tube that's that's the hope uh what else am i working on okay i have put a good amount of progress onto my uh, weekender light this is a sweater that i'm doing for the fall garment make along which i'll talk about more in a little bit and i am on the sleeves the body completely done i've even woven in some ends and now i am just working on the sleeves and you can see i've actually got my two balls of yarn tucked into the sleeves because that helps um keep it from getting kind of tangled up in the bag i really should um switch this over to a, a float tote i have a two skein version so i could just like pop these into the little cups and then put my sweater on top and it wouldn't get tangled pretty much at all but i don't know why i haven't done that maybe i'll do that okay so doesn't look like a ton of progress because it's only maybe two and two and a half inches but it's on both sleeves so i am doing my sleeves 
two at a time. Um, last week I had it on magic loop and I've since switched it to two circular needles. So I've got two balls of yarn, like the sleeves are totally separate, but basically what I do is I knit across both sleeves on one needle, drop that needle, and then flip to the other side and use the other needle for that. And I've got markers in here in the center. You can see they're not on stitches, but I put a marker there just to remind me to switch yarns because if you don't, if you knit all the way across both sleeves, you've then connected them and that would be bad. So the marker just kind of like says, hey, pay attention, you need to switch yarns. Um, and that helps me a lot. So there you go, I've done a little bit on the sleeves. I am using this green, you can tell it's for my socks. <laughs> I am using this as a running stitch marker. So I'm doing uh, decreases on the sleeves every inch, I think. And so I know that an inch for me is about seven rows. And so I'm using this to mark every seven rows. So there was my first decrease. I knit seven rows. I knit my decrease row. And then I flipped the yarn inside. And then I knit seven more rows, a decrease row. And I flipped the yarn to the outside. And now I've done like four or so rows past that. And then once I do the decrease, I'll flip it. And I'll just keep going back and forth. Um, Alternatively, you could use the light bulb stitch markers and clip them into the stitch. I just didn't have any, and so I cut off a piece of yarn from a project that I did have. There you go, there's a hack for you if you don't have the proper tools that you need. So I feel like now that I've started the sleeves, they're super easy just to pick up wherever I am at. So I can now start to work on those a little bit faster. And it's not, it's still not like the most enjoyable for me to do both sleeves at the same time. It is kind of a little cumbersome to have, you know, two balls of yarn and be able to flip things back and forth. Um, but I know that I'm going to be happy future, future me is going to be happy when I finish one sleeve and I've actually finished both sleeves so it will be worth it in the end um, but this is the weekender light by andrea mallory you can see how pretty the body is i i love it so much the ribbing's all done on the bottom i tried it on when i didn't have sleeves and it fit well um, it's going to fit even better when i block it and that ribbing you know blocks out and everything i think it's going to look great for winter i'm using nitpick stroll fingering in the colorway jackrabbit heather and the weather was really cold last week. Like I could have worn the sweater had it been finished. And then this week it's warm again. And I think it gets cold again next week. I'm not gonna say that I ha I'll have it finished by next week um, at all, but I will have it finished. I wanna have it finished by November 20th because that's the end of the fall garment make along. And I started it right after the fall garment make along started in August. So it's like a three month or maybe I started in September. So it'll be about about a three month sweater for me, which, you know, it really isn't that bad. That's not really terrible, actually. So I feel proud of myself for making a garment. I want to make more, but there's, you know, there's only limited hours in the day here. So you can only do what you can do. All right. My last whip is in this adorable bag by So Crazy Crafter. I will just find myself like if I'm holding this, I'll just be like, stroking the little gnome's beards <laughs> it's very like a nice textural thing to me okay i've been working on my woolly wishes hat well it's that's not what the pattern's called i'm making this for the uh charity organization woolly wishes we're doing a make along for this as well hang on sorry everything's all tangled and i have gotten quite a bit done since last week i've finished all of the ribbing for this hat and I've just barely started the stockinette. This is the uh, sock, head sock head hat, I think. It's just sock head hat. Um, and it's a slouchy hat. And the yarn I'm using is Three Irish Girls in the colorway Everlasting Gobstopper. And it's a really, really fun yarn, super fun. And I have it in a yarn cozy light. I think this color is um, print Disney Princess Parade by Malia Made It if I'm remembering that correctly. So yeah, it's so pretty. I'm making the child size. So it's like the second size in the pattern. This is a free pattern, by the way. Um, it's really good for, I think, for making for others because you can pick their size and you can grab a skein of fingering weight out of your stash that maybe is like beautiful, but not your colors. And you can make a really nice gift for someone. So great for Christmas knitting, good for charity knitting, good for, you know, making something for yourself, all of that. 
Um, but I am using size one needles. I think they called for twos, but I always knit socks on a one, so I went to a one. Um, and what else? Child size. Oh, you might notice that I am knitting on Magic Loop, and that is because I don't really like knitting on short needles. So a 16 inch circular that would work for this hat um, has a shorter needle uh, sh like shaft or tip. And I really don't like that. My hands do not like that. They get really crampy and uncomfortable and it starts to hurt my like elbows and forearms. And so rather than do that, I just get a 40 inch cord. So longer than my socks, my socks are 32. I get a 40 inch cord and I make my hats this way. And honestly, I think I have a hundred and something stitches. I wouldn't have too many more to make a hat for me. <laughs> um, you know, kids have large heads, so that's about the same. I mean, a little bit more for my size. So these are needles that I've used for me before and they work great. And the other thing that's nice about doing your hat, the whole thing on Magic Loop, is that you never have to change needle sizes when you get to the decreases at the top. Because typically, you know, you'd be on a 16 inch and then you have to switch to either Magic Loop or double pointed needles. With this, you can just go all the way to the end. So I'm enjoying this. I decided to put a Mickey and Mickey, Mickey Cookie and Milk Progress Keeper. This I actually got at Disney World as a charm and I just put the clasp on it and now it's a Progress Keeper. So watch out if you ever, or maybe I got it at Land, I don't remember. If you ever go to Disney World or Disneyland or the Disney Store at the mall, look for the charms because you can always just convert them into Progress Keepers. That's what I did. Hold on, I gotta untangle this here. So I think... Is that it? Yeah, I mean, that's it as far as like stuff I've actually worked on this week. I haven't touched my, um, well, I've already forgotten what it's called. Slip Stravaganza, haven't touched it, but I will give you a progress update and I will show it to you actually. I did bring it over here, but I haven't done anything. In fact, I took the needles off of it because they were the same size that I needed for my, uh, like a cloud cardigan. Nope, nope. Weekender light, weekender light. And so in order to do the two circular sets, I needed to grab that size. And so I just took the needles off of my, <laughs> off of this. So here's my slip extravaganza. I am still on the clue one bonus and all four clues have now come out. So I am three plus weeks behind at this point. So this is what I've decided. And maybe, I think there are some other people in the same boat because I did talk about it on Instagram and there are others of you who are either just as behind or like, you know, whatever. So I really wanted to stay caught up this year. Like I was talking about this back in August and it didn't happen. And so I was a little bit disappointed in myself, but not for too long because it's knitting and it's okay. <laughs> it's just, you know what, it's just knitting. So like if you don't meet your goal for a personal project, like it's, it's okay. If you don't like it anymore, stop making it. You're the boss. So I do like this and I am having fun, but I am not having fun doing it right now because I have other things I wanna work on. So I took the needles off. I am putting it away for a little bit and I want to finish my weekender light. At least that's how I feel today. <laughs> and if I change my mind, I can put the needles back on here. Not a big deal. So that's my plan right now is to finish my weekender first and then I will come back to this. The make along will be over. No pressure to do any kind of catching up. Everything will be, uh, the whole pattern will be released and I can just make to my heart's content. And I have a feeling that I might even start knitting it faster at that point. One, because I won't have another big project going, but also because I won't have to. And so I'll just like be like, well, now I want to work on it more. Who knows what will actually happen? We'll see. I'd like to get it done by the end of the year. I feel like that's a realistic goal for me. Hopefully I'll get more knitting time around the holidays too and I can do a lot of work on that. So that's how that's going. My project will be linked down below if you want to see all the yarns that I'm using. They're really, really pretty. So if you're doing the slip extravaganza and you're far behind too, don't sweat it. Make it at your own pace. We're having a second session of the make-along after the make-along is over. Not really. That's unofficial. And what else? Oh, that's it. Okay, so that's it for all of my projects this week. But like I said, I have some really good questions from the Ravelry group. So let's just pull that up and we can answer those. All right, the first question is from Megs897. 
When you are knitting socks cuff down and would like to do a contrast toe, about how many grams of yarn do you end up using on the toes? I'm trying to see if I have enough of some leftover yarn to use on my current pair of socks. Thanks. Okay, so um, if you have questions for me, you can always ask them on, you know, in the comments or DM me on Instagram, but if you want them answered on the podcast, make sure to go to the Ravelry group to the Ask Me thread. The group is called Love and Stitches, and you can throw your question in there. So I haven't had uh, answered questions from here in quite a while, so this one's from 17 days ago. So I'm so sorry, Megs897, you've probably already moved past this, but I'm still gonna answer the question. Hopefully it will help somebody. So when I am knitting contrasting, like socks with contrasting, pieces, usually each one, like the toe, heel, and cuff, all take around three grams. So there's a reason that yarn dyers give you a 20 gram mini when you buy a sock set. It's because 20 grams typically is pretty good for a pair of socks. So like 10 grams for each sock, or you know, there's like a gram or so in there of extra. So I would say around three grams is generous and it should be enough for you, as long as you're not making like maybe a, um, a men's size, like somebody with a very big foot or like wide foot, I think that that will be enough. Um, what you can do as well just to help is when you make your first sock or we make the toe on your first sock, weigh your yarn, knit the toe, and then weigh it again and see how many it took, and then you'll know for sure on your second sock if you're going to have enough. Okay, the next question is from the Pink Stitch 26 Hi Natalie, lately I've had so many projects on the needles, and sometimes I'm not motivated to work on any of the projects. They are all going well, and I know I'm going to love the finished products, so I don't want to frog anything. How do you manage lots of whips? Thanks in advance. And actually there was a similar question, so I'm gonna read that one too and answer them together. So this question is similar. It's from Bonnie Sob Sobsack, I think. Um, Hi Natalie, do you ever run out of inspiration even after looking at everyone's amazing whips and finished objects? Sometimes I go through times where I have so many projects and not enough time, and other times I go through lulls where not many things are exciting me. What do you do when this happens? Thanks, obsessed with your podcast and vlogs, Bonnie. Okay, so Bonnie and the Pink Stitch. Okay, what do you do? How do you manage your whips? What about when you're feeling un uninspired? So I feel like we all go through that at some point. If you haven't yet, then you, uh, I don't know, maybe you're immune <laughs> to it, but I think we all go through it at least a little bit where we're not excited by our whips, we're overwhelmed by our whips, we get home at night and we don't even really feel like knitting and then we feel guilty that we're not working on our projects and you know, just all of this, it's, um, I guess, you know, we, knitting is so important, knitting and crochet are so important to me. I imagine if you're watching this podcast, they are pretty important to you as well. And it's, you know, it's more than just a hobby. It is definitely, you know, uh, a meditation, it's a recreation, it is all of those things and so much more. It's community, it's everything. And so when you're, when you're uninspired to work on things, um, a lot of times it's because there's something happening outside of knitting that is making you feel that way. At least that's how it is for me. So I know that when I am very um, stressed with work or with home stuff, if I'm really busy, if I have to make a ton of decisions in a day or if I'm going through a time where like, um, like there's periods of work where I'm doing a lot more thinking, like I'm a testing coordinator, so when we're doing those testing weeks, it's really intense. And I get home a lot of times and I, you know, I have other things to do around the house. I don't have kids, but I do have to like clean and sometimes I cook and you know, all the normal things. And at the end of the day, I'm just like, I cannot, I cannot pull out a project right now. I just wanna like veg on the couch and watch one episode and go to bed or read or do something different, honestly. Um, and I think that's 100% okay. And then on the other side, maybe you have so many whips, like you feel, a little bit overwhelmed. Maybe that's not like what you're naming it, but like you can't really like pick a project. Like you're not sure what to focus on and like nothing really seems exciting. Maybe you have too many choices um, or maybe you just need like a, I don't know what the right word is. Like you need a push to like pick something and like work on it and then that 
motivates you to work on something else and you know a little something else and a little something else so um managing lots of whips i'm going to go back to that specific question how do you manage lots of whips okay i don't think i manage lots of whips well i think that's why i'm in the situation i am in currently where i have a project that i am actually setting aside because i have too much going on i have too much going on i have too much in my life i have too much in my knitting so i need to simplify so i am going to focus on two projects right now i'm going to well not really i'm going to do three projects right now i'm, I'm putting one aside and I'm just gonna focus on that because that's what feels right to me right now. That's what I feel like I wanna finish. Um, and so that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna physically put the other projects somewhere different than the ones that I am working on. So I have like two different baskets in my house, one in my yarn room, one by the couch in the living room. And the ones that I'm not working are physically being put downstairs. And the ones that I am working on are actually, they're usually just staying in my backpack to and from work, <laughs> but they're gonna go upstairs with me. They're gonna be out, they're gonna be visible. And so that I am encouraged to work on them. Another thing you could do um, to stay, help you with focus, I love doing this. I've seen um, Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady. She does this every single morning. She does 30 minutes of sweater knitting every single morning and she posted on her story and not only is it fun to watch her progress every day but it's such a good reminder that like just a little bit every day will chip away at something that is so much bigger you know a, a sweater that's a lot of knitting and just 30 minutes every day you can get it done uh, we kind of did that if you were watching at the beginning of the year in january we did a knit and a crochet 30 for 30 so for 30 days you picked uh, either one project or one goal and every single day you worked on it for 30 minutes and the feedback from a lot of you was I got so much done on things that I didn't really want to work on because I knew I only had to work on it for 30 minutes <laughs> and sometimes you work on it for 30 minutes and you're like excited about it again and so you work on it for longer or the next day you work on it for longer or whatever but um, I think just like making a little plan like that is really really good all that being said, if you're not excited about your projects, it's absolutely okay to find something that you are excited about. You probably have some yarn at home. If everything is just like eh to you right now and your life is crazy, maybe you need something really, really simple. So, you know, go pick out a beautiful skin, put everything else away, get it physically out of the way, cover it with a blanket or something, go pick out a new skin of yarn, Take the time, wind it up. Maybe wind it by hand if you really just need to like meditate and take your time. Cast the project on, knit a row or two so it's prepped. And for a few days, or you know, you don't even have to ha set a time, just like for a while it feels good, just work on that one thing. And that can kind of help reset, you know, your mojo, your mentality, your, uh, I don't know, everything, whatever word you want to call it and help you feel like back into the mood to knit and maybe pull out another one of those projects. But one more time, absolutely anything you feel about knitting is acceptable because it is knitting and you are the boss of your knitting and crochet. Okay, did I answer those questions or did I just get too philosophical on you? Let me see. Um, how do you manage a lot of whips? I feel like we did talk about that. And then um, when you're not inspired, when you go through lulls. I think we covered that. I think we covered that. If you have more specific questions, let me know. I always have ideas. <laughs> I always have ideas for you. I do find, ooh, sorry. I do find that when I'm not excited, I do like to watch other people's um, podcasts. I think you did mention that, like looking at other people's projects and that's, that's still not motivating you. I do find that that does motivate me sometimes. And it also works for me with cleaning. Um, like if I'm not feeling motivated to get up and I watch somebody's cleaning video, I'm like, all right, you know what? I can do this. It's not so bad. So it works for me in more than one area for sure. All right. Next question is from Stinkzilla. Hi, Natalie. Are you getting a Christmas advent this year? If so, what dyer are you going with? I'm thinking about doing an advent for the first time. It looks like so much fun. Okay, I am getting an advent this year. It is from Dragon Horde Yarn and Yarn Cafe Creations. Um, I'm guessing it will come relatively soon, um, but I have gotten their advent for the past two years. This is my third year, and it is a Harry Potter themed advent. It is 24 mini skeins and one full skein and usually one other like 
very um is curated the right word i feel like that's a buzzword like a very nice like one other thing instead of having like lots of little like trinkets that are you know okay they pick like one really amazing thing one year was a bag last year it was a beautiful candle and um, it's really it's a really great one so you can no longer get that one i actually think i got it back in april um but i think there are still dyers selling theirs but you better hop on it quick because it's so much work for the yarn dyers and they need that time in advance in order to get it dyed and wound and uh, sent off to you so do it quickly or you might miss your chance for this year okay um i do see some people in here answering questions that i uh like helping to answer questions that we talked about in the past so um somebody had asked about something a sweater where you held dk weight doubled and i see some of you answering that which is super helpful my friend brooke is helping answer the question about the kaleidoscope for colors um so yeah lots of helpful people uh, somebody was um, giving a recommendation for um, like a, a group on Ravelry if you want to be a tester, um, that's on there. Okay, I think there are, okay, so there's still a few more questions and oh, 30 minutes already. I knew we were gonna be chatty. I thought this could go either way, short or long, and I guess we're going the long route. Okay, <laughs> um, this question is from L Calver 28 Hi Natalie, I've been making the V-neck boxy for the fall garment make-along. It's finished and I've blocked it. It turned out so wide and clearly too big. However, the top section above the bust and sleeves are a good fit. So my question is, do you think I could rip back to just below the underarm and decrease at either side for a few rounds to bring in the width? Sorry for such a long post, I want to try to save it. The thought of ripping all the way back makes me so sad lucy okay lucy that's such a bummer i know that it's so disappointing when something you have worked on for hours and hours and hours is not turning out the way that you hoped um so the boxy sweater is a basically it's a square so you i think you like cast on i haven't done the v-neck one yet i do want to make the v-neck one but you basically have the same stitches from here from the underarm straight down no shaping in it whatsoever super oversized like 15 to 20 inches of positive ease um so you could give that a try my concern with that is that decreasing right here would not flatter the shape of the boxy at all because it's meant to just drop straight from the underarms and so you actually need fewer stitches overall at the top in order to get a smaller width overall with other sweaters you know you might do like decreasing to the waist increasing back out for the hips to make some adjustments but for the boxy i'm just i'm really not sure um since i haven't made the pattern before it is harder for me to, to say because i know you said it fits well up here um but it might need to be smaller everywhere in order for you to get what you want um i know that's not what you want to hear but uh having made and remade and ripped halfway back and then remade sweaters and still the wrong size and then ripped them out again um you probably just want to make it the right size because it's you're going to end up doing more work in the long run but i would say rip it back to that point put it on some yarn and try it on again and see does it really fit you at the top like you like it to um before you do anything else and if if you're seeing that actually it's like still way too big maybe you just need to make some adjustments for how much like you have here in the boxy i know um, i have some friends that have made the other boxy that's from the bottom up which is a little easier to adjust and they just cast on fewer stitches so that they didn't have as wide of uh of a sweater um so i don't know and maybe you can make that work in the reverse but i wish you luck because Yes, you definitely want to have a sweater that you love how it looks and fits on you. All right, this is from Lanny129. Hi, Natalie. I usually knit socks with 7525 fingering weight. I purchased a skein that is 8020 and appears to be thicker or more plump than the 7525 yarn I normally use. What adjustments, if any, do I need to make when using the 8020 skein? Do I need to change needle size? stitch count or stay with my usual formula thank you leanne okay 
<laughs> I'm laughing because I've so done this before and I, I have this knowledge in my brain and I still make this mistake. Okay, so not saying that you've made a mistake at all. I'm just saying that like I forget that 75, 25 yarn and 80, 20 can be drastically different. So you're correct. The 80-20 is thicker and plumper most of the time than a 75-25 yarn. So I like to use 75-25. It gets me eight stitches to the inch. I know I cast on 60 stitches. I know how many rows I do. It's like so easy when I have 75-25 yarn. When I go to 80-20, because I have some in my stash, I try not to buy it anymore um, because it is so different from like my preferred sock formula um, it is thicker and plumper so you're totally right if you use the same needle size and the same stitch count you're going to have a dense sock that is also probably too big <laughs> it's going to be like too wide for you um, so you want to make a few adjustments um, you are already on the right track so i would change your needle size i would go up a size i like to knit my 75 25 on a one and my 80 20 on a two so go up maybe to a two or whatever is one size up um, you will also need to adjust the stitch count so you will need to reduce the number of stitches for the sock i don't know exactly i feel like i do 52 or something like that does that sound right i go from 60 subtract eight go down to like 52. Um, depending on which way, which way did you say you're making your socks? I don't think you said. For some reason, I always seem to be doing toe up when I run into the, the yarn base thing that's different. And so I'm able to try it on, like I'll make the toe, you know, increase to 52 or whatever, try it on and see if that's right. Um, and then I will go from there. I think it's 52, cause that would give you 26 on each needle for the, um, for the sock so give it a try you're definitely gonna have to make two adjustments one to the needle size and one to the stitch count to make a fabric and a size that is similar to the 75 25 yarn and once you okay i'm back oh that might have been an abrupt interruption because all of the sudden my camera stopped recording and actually it's my phone so it stopped recording and then i went to look for the recording and it wasn't there and i thought oh my gosh I'm going to have to say that I'm not having a podcast again <laughs> because I cannot go back and record, re-record everything tonight. I've got other things to do and thank goodness I deleted a few things off of my phone and it came back. Oh, oh my gosh. So then I just spent a few minutes deleting more videos from my phone. I have to do this all the time. I have so many videos on here and I think hopefully we're good. So thank goodness. I'm so grateful that it, that it was there. Anyway, so... <laughs> the socks once you figure out your formula write it down so you have your formula for 75 25 and for 80 20 and it'll make it a whole lot easier okay last question here um this is from k kd zen knits i think um hi natalie getting back to knitting again after a long hiatus and i found your youtube channel while looking for a sock tutorial by the way i really love your channel thank you I'm still a beginner sock knitter, although I've knitted a couple a, year, a few years back. Here is my issue. I found a whip sock that I had started a couple years ago um, on Magic Loop two at a time. I decided to separate them and now one of them is confusing me. The working yarn is attached to the front needle and I can't figure out how to move the working yarn to the back needle. Here are a few pictures that explain my dilemma. Hope you can help. Thanks, Kathleen. Okay, Kathleen's got her picture here. If you guys want to look, you can go look. I zoomed in on it and you can see that the yarn is attached to the front needle, though the direction of the knitting is correct. Um, so this has happened to me before. Um, it's hard to say exactly what causes it, but I can give you a couple solutions to help you. So first I would count your stitches. Um, it's hard to tell, especially over like here, over here. If those are separate stitches or not if they're separate i counted and you've got 32 and 33 i think hard to count on the computer um, but give them a count just to make sure you don't have anything extra first and then what i would do is i would actually tink back that stitch right there on the front needle so undo that and pull on that working yarn and see what happens to the working yarn my guess is the working yarn is going to go to the back needle 
and maybe you've already like knit this stitch and then it came onto this needle or I don't know what happened but this when this has happened to me in the past I take that one stitch out or down a row and when I pull on my working yarn it goes back to where it's supposed to be so my first tip is to count make sure you have the right number of stitches the second is to take that one stitch down uh, take it out one stitch and see where your working yarn goes hopefully it goes to the back and everything is right I don't think it's gonna go the other way so hopefully that helps um, you with your problem I know this one was only from just a couple days ago so hopefully um, maybe you've already resolved it but if not hopefully that will help you okay that's all the questions I'm caught up in the Ravelry group so if you do have questions for me feel free to go add them and I will do my best to answer them on next week's podcast okay we have some news to discuss no new video this week it's been a crazy crazy week but um, we do have three, two make-alongs uh, going on right now and one coming up. So the first is the fall garment make-along um, and that is in its third month. Um, this is for all kinds of garments, whether it's for you know kids or for yourself. Um, it can be a whip, you don't have to finish it. It's just to work on garments for the fall or honestly, it doesn't matter if they're for the fall. They just need to be a garment um, so you can enter this one on both Ravelry and Instagram there's a Ravelry thread that explains everything and I'll have all those links down below too or you can use the hashtag fall garment mal on Instagram and be entered to win I have seven amazing prizes this month and I explain all of them in an IGTV video so of course that will be linked too so you can find out all the information it's not too late to join because again you don't have to finish or start within the time frame you just have to be working on a garment so definitely make sure to enter that one and then we have the woolly wishes make along this one is very very important um, if you haven't seen the interview that I did with the Woolly Wishes organization, go watch that. It's um, really, really good and you'll get to hear the why behind this make along. So we are joining together as a knit and crochet community to make different items for Woolly Wishes. They take um, these items to Turkey, to a Syrian refugee camp. Um, so there, you know, I, I am not an expert in this area, so definitely listen to the interview because they explain it better. But there are camps in Turkey for Syrian refugees, and the, this specific camp that these items are going to is not registered, and therefore it doesn't receive funding. So they are definitely in desperate need of different things, and winter is coming and it gets cold there, and so what we what we can do best is to make knitted hats, uh, mittens, socks, sweaters and send them over there. So all the details on that are also down below. They accept donations all year long. So if you're just hearing about it and you're like, oh no, I can't make something like super quickly, don't worry. You can always send in your donations to Wooly Wishes. Um, but if you maybe have something already ready to go or something quick to knit or crochet, um, the deadline for that is November 15th for the make along if you wanna enter to win prizes. Um, so that's the deadline for the make along because that's the next shipment date over to Turkey for all of those items. But again, please don't let that discourage you from donating to Wooly Wishes. They take donations year round. Specifically, they're looking for child size things. Um, and that's why I'm making the child size hat to send there. Um, but I've got all different, like in the, um, in the info doc, I have all different free patterns that you can use or you can use any patterns that you want. Those are just some suggestions and the sock head hat is one of the, the suggested patterns, um, but there's also crochet, there's also um, like booties and socks and sweaters for kids and stuff like that. So check that one out too and let me know if you have questions and follow um, Wooly Wishes so that you can um, always see what's happening with them and their different events. And then the last one is, well not the last one actually, but pretty much, um, Sockmas 2020. This is a new one that I announced just last week um, and it is not starting until November 27th. That's gonna run through December 18th, I believe. Did I put that up there? Uh, Yes, December 18th, <laughs> December 18th. So it's a three week sock make along. It's just for socks. The goal is to knit a pair or knit or crochet. I did not specify, um, I, I didn't include this and I keep getting this question, but yes, please crochet socks, absolutely allowed. So knit or crochet 
one pair of socks um, within that three weeks. If you make more, great, um, but they do have to be started on or after the 27th and be finished by December 18th to be eligible for prizes. If you just wanna make along with us and you don't care about prizes, please join us because I love that too. Um, so this, this make along is only being hosted on Ravelry because of the way that the prizes work. So we have three sponsors. Um, we have Vita from So Crazy Crafter, Lindsay from Simply Serving, and um, we also have uh, Tia. Oh my gosh, I'm like seeing people's Instagram handles instead of their names. We have Tia from Tia's Terrific Threads. And all of that, again, I have the information. I have a video where I announced it and showed you all the products. Um, and you don't have to get the products to participate in Sockmas 2020. Um, and honestly, right now you can't anymore because <laughs> you guys went crazy and you bought everything. You completely sold out these three small businesses, which is amazing. Like maybe I'm the first to tell you this, but I just want you to know that you have made these businesses year or at least quarter by buying up all of their Sockma stuff. These are small, women-owned, sole proprietor businesses, and you have helped them so much just by participating in this make-along and, you know, doing your fun hobby. So I hope that feels really good. <laughs> um, but yeah, so all of the products sold out. I know that um, Vita has already relisted bags and sold all those out again. Um, Lindsay is listing her second chance uh, for progress keepers tonight. Um, and I don't know if she's gonna have them again, but I will always keep you posted if they decide to list anything else. Um, and then I believe Tia is gonna have another listing of some yarn, though it won't be guaranteed by the start of the make along, but if you like that colorway, you can still get it. So all those details will be in the description box and I will be you know, reminding you on Instagram every so often as well because that's a lot of different things going on. So two current make-alongs, one coming up on the 27th. And my last announcement is that I am doing Vlogmas this year. It's only November, it's November 4th, but in a month from now, you will have a new vlog every single day. I'm gonna be opening up my advent calendar with you. I'm going to be sharing my knitting with you. I'm gonna be sharing my life with you and you'll get to see a lot of what is happening in my in my life in December. I think it's gonna be really fun. It's always really, uh, I will always enjoy Vlogmas. I've got two years of Vlogmas already on my channel. If you need some Christmas spirit right now or just some holiday spirit, you can go watch that. Um, but I thoroughly enjoy watching other people's Vlogmases. It's like just a really fun way to kind of, you know, start the day and just have a fun holiday season. So I am very much looking forward to that. All right, life. So just like last week I, I had this written down in my notes so i said this work week was crazy okay well guess what this work week is crazy too <laughs> um so just like last week we don't have internet um we are going on one week of not having internet at our school now uh we do have hot spots at the school but like only a limited number and so all of the teachers that teach virtually um, from the school are getting those hotspots. And I'm not a classroom teacher, so I'm like definitely not a priority for Wi-Fi. I'm not even bitter about it, I understand. Um, I do have an iPad at work that works, but I cannot do work on my computer. And so for me, that's kind of affected me, obviously with my work. There's, I do a lot of work with spreadsheets and it's really, really hard to do that on an iPad. So I haven't been doing that and I've been like, missing emails and like, I don't know, it's just an adjustment. And then I get home at the end of the day and I don't wanna do more work like that. I don't wanna get on my computer. And so it's just been interesting. And um, it's also been different for me. I've had to kind of change my schedule uh, to do YouTube because normally I get to work about 45 minutes early and I get on my work computer and I get all my social media and video like out for the day. Um, and I can't do that when I don't have internet at work. So I've been getting up extra early and doing that here at home and then going to work. And it's, um, it's just been an adjustment and it's temporary, which is good. I am super grateful that tomorrow and Friday I get to work from home. I'm going to be still working really, really hard and working with kids via zoom, but I will at least have like internet and I can check my email and when I want to like, you know, do my budget or check something on YouTube throughout the day, I can do that, so I'm grateful for that. Um, I've also started deep cleaning my house. I have a goal of 
deep cleaning and decluttering every single room in my house by Thanksgiving. And I've been decluttering like all throughout the year and, and stuff, but I've never really done a good deep clean on this house. Like I've never cleaned the windows. Um, so I had to learn how to do that and, you know, clean the baseboards and just the stuff that you don't do every single day. Um, so of course I am recording that journey over on this and that, which is my cleaning and uh, organization channel. Um, so I always have that link down below if you can't find it. I have it linked in the description box if you want to go check out that channel. Um, but yeah, I am deep cleaning every single bit of my house. And I have made these checklists so that if you want to do the same thing, it's really simple to follow because I have it, like I have the room, like let's just say the kitchen. And then I have five minute tasks and 15 minute tasks and 30 minute tasks. So you know, you don't need to deep clean your kitchen all in one day or two days. You can do it throughout the week, you know, do a five minute task here and a 15 minute task there. And before you know it, your kitchen will be deep clean. So I'm sharing all of that on my other channel and that's taking up a lot of my knitting time because it takes a long time to actually do that. Like I'm actually cleaning my house and I'm also recording it. So um, that's been really good. And I just want to get it done by Thanksgiving and it'll be, you know, reset and everything will feel really, really good, I think. All right, bringing me joy this week has been podcasts. I've been listening to some interesting podcasts. Um, let me see if I can remember off the top of my head. One I think is Level Up Babe, and the other one is called um, Mommy Millionaire, I believe. Um, these are not knitting related podcasts. They are definitely more on the um, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial oh that's a hard word to say um and like motivational side uh or like women owned businesses so maybe you're in that same boat as me and that's very interesting to you um but the ones i listened to today were both about both very similar one was about um like what is that word it's kind of like a frou-frou word um manifesting like manifesting things in your life and uh the other one was about like feminine and masculine energy and the first time I heard all of those phrases I was like okay well that's a bunch of whatever because that's just like silliness um, but really all it is is mindset and so I've really been enjoying those podcasts about mindset um, because I think that that is definitely um, something that you can change about you know your day-to-day -day. so you know you have x number of tasks to do in a day you're probably doing some of the same things every day and you can choose for the most part to feel one way about it or you can choose to feel another way about it and so um doing that like mindset shift um has been something that i'm trying to work on because there's a lot of things that are not going my way you know going my way i say like you know there's a lot of things i'd like to change about my life and a lot of things that are really amazing so just trying to bring the same energy and joy to all of those things while they're in my life and appreciate them um, is important to me at this moment so i do it wet better on good days <laughs> like not so great on days when i don't get a lot of sleep that's hard <laughs> um but yeah so i've been listening to podcasts and i really like them uh, Mom, mommy millionaire and level up babe if you're listening for the first time and you haven't listened to podcasts like that before, I will just warn you that it might seem like a little rah-rah, but give it a try and, you know, kind of start like hearing those buzzwords and stuff and you might find some value in that. Um, yes. Okay. I think that's everything. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening to the long ramble. I feel like old me is back in this podcast. You know, I used to go on for an hour like every single week and I think that um, I liked that because I got to talk so much with you guys um and i've just been having such a busy time the past few months that i haven't had the brain space to do it and i'm i'm starting to feel more like myself and feeling better so hopefully i can get back into this knitting here in a little bit too anyway thank you guys so much for watching i hope you have an amazing week and i will see you next week i will have two videos next week i promise all right bye guys <laughs>